Greetings. We're going to talk today about uh, both sides of uh, the enterprise, both the OLTP part, uh, the OLTP side, as well as uh, DNS and WIS, and uh, chat a little bit about uh, some of the things that uh, we've been doing lately. Um, to start with, uh, the total number of registrars accessing the registry today in production is 44. Uh, that's up from about uh, high 20s last time we spoke. Uh, there are 42 that are actually qualified ready to go into production. So we expect over the next uh, two months or so to have about 80 folks in production. Um, that'll be about, um, we expect the rest of the 30 to be in production probably about a couple months after that. On to the daily transactions. On the OLTP side, in terms of ads, mods, uh, deletes, and checks of domain names using register registrar protocol, we're averaging for the quarter about 19 million, 19.5 million operations a day. Um, that's biased because it started a little bit lower uh, in the beginning part of the quarter. We're actually running about uh, 23, 25 million a day. Um, substantially above our projections and our rejiggered projections after the, uh, the fourth quarter of last year. Breaking that down a little bit further into the types of transactions, um, can actually talk about the number of ads versus mods versus deletes. But lumping all those together, uh, we're seeing about 8.4 million of those a month, at least in the month of May. Um, about 18 million queries and over 600 million checks. Um, you can see that the growth rates have been uh, pretty astounding. Uh, fortunately, check is a pretty lightweight operation, but um, even the reads and writes are, um, uh, are uh, increasing pretty rapidly. It's kept us busy. Um, in terms of our service level agreement, the actual penalties for the agreement go into effect June 15th, uh, next day or two. Uh, we've been abiding by it since uh, the beginning of the year. And um, basically, uh, through January and February, we had, um, actually in January, had several planned outages to implement some uh, government mandated upgrades. Um, our uh, average round trip time for a check within the data center was about 600 milliseconds, uh, about two and a half seconds per ad. Uh, that went up a bit in February in terms of our performance, um, and there were no planned outages at all or unplanned. Looking at March, April, and May, um, most of the planned outages were for upgrades to uh, try to deal with the uh, exploding uh, load. Um, April was particularly difficult. We, had, we uh, nearly doubled the capacity of the application servers coming into uh, the registry. Um, we also, in March, deployed the new mechanism for measuring the service level agreement. Part of the requirement is that we actually measure for each individual operation the round trip time within the data center. So you've got to pull a, a get time of day when it comes in. When you push out the last slide, you pull it again and do a difference. And we actually have to take all of those, every single one, and measure and uh, average them out for the month. So the reports just to figure out the SLA for the month run for about 24, uh, 26 hours right now. Uh, generates about uh, 8 to 10 gigabytes of log a day just, for the SLA, just to measure the SLA. Anyway, with that we went to a much finer grained mechanism to, to measure what the, time, what the performance is as opposed to what we were using before. And these numbers are actual averages of every single operation done for the month. So um, you can see it went up a little bit in April as we were trying to deal with the load. Um, we put in a lot more capacity, so the performance went down, and uh, the performance got better in May. Um, we also, um, this doesn't show, we actually had a, um, an unplanned outage in the very beginning of June, uh, a power distribution strip uh, blew, and um, both the primary uh, load balancer and the backup were on the same strip, so they both went down. Not too bright. Uh, we went through and made sure that wasn't uh, the case anywhere else. Um, anyway, going to uh, DNS and the root server, uh, this displays the um, total number of uh, UDP queries in per second. Um, and you can see that um, uh, the red line is midnight. Um, this is a five minute average, so it tends to smooth uh, peaks. You'll see peaks that run into the 12 to 15,000 per second range over uh, you know, a second or two. Um, we're seeing somewhere between 9,500 and 10,000 a day. I think this is um, um, later in the week. Um, weekends drop down to about 5,000 or so, uh, 4,500. Um, you can also see the 30-minute average for a longer period of time. Um, looking at drops, um, the A route right now looks pretty sharp. Uh, very few drops apart from the restarts. Um, if you're wondering what the, the other restart at midnight is, uh, due to some uh, memory leak issues, we restart NAMD. Um, 
Since this graph has been taken, I believe we've moved to restarting it during one of the regular loads. There's no reason to restart it three times, right? So um, um, rather than reload, we restart one of the reloads and then do a reload. So there's only two of those a day. Uh, looking also at uh, the GTLD specifically, uh, one of the more um, busy uh, GTLDs apart from the one on the A route is J. And um, this shows you the approximate, um, you know, during peak um, at 10 to, uh, to 6 or so, we're running about 2,200 to 2,500 per second. Um, you can also see M, which is in Hong Kong, and uh, that's substantially lower. Um, doesn't get much above 2,000 uh, per second. Um, the interesting part about all this, um, actually let me back up for a minute. A couple of the stats that aren't up here are who is. We're seeing about 17 to 20 million who is queries a day. Um, most of those, over 90%, um, are split between folks that are mining the data or registrars that have done a recursive who is, so that you go to their site, um, do a who is query, and it'll come to us if it's on their database and um, resolve the, you know, figure out which registrar to go to and pull the data. So, uh, but, but most of it is folks mining the Who is database. Tons of wildcard queries, A, 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 et cetera. Um, the other things in terms of customer service, um, we, we're, get, we're averaging about 120, 130 calls a week. Uh, they're split between relatively simple data or technical things and some very painful policy issues. Uh, you know, getting through all the agreements with the registrars, getting them started up. The policy calls average more than half an hour, about 30, 33, 35 minutes per call. Uh, the other ones are, are much quicker in the five to ten minute range. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the things we've been doing uh, to try to scale the operation for a couple minutes and talk a little bit about what happened with the AROOT recently. Some of you may or may not have been familiar with uh, some of the experience uh, with, uh, with the uh, AROOT performance. Um, basically, the bottom line on the back end side is we saw some dramatic growth. Um, our SLA, which is going into effect, will cost us somewhere between four and 500000 a day, paid back two registrars when we don't meet performance or availability requirements. Um, and with the kind of growth rates, we need to do something different for the database. Um, we evaluated the uh, Sun IBM and HP and then um, actually did a hands-on evaluation of, of IBM porting all our code. Most of it's Java in the main old PP part, so it was pretty quick. And um, also took a look at the E10K. Um, in the end, what we found was that um, the IBM, surprisingly, because we've been a Sun shop since forever, um, was just, just a screamer, very fast. Uh, got some great support. Um, the uh, Java implementation actually was real sharp. We were pretty surprised to find out that how much IBM's invested in it. Um, so the bottom line is we put this um, in shadow production mode for the last month and a little bit uh, in parallel with the Sun. We switched over this weekend and uh, our latencies have dropped for the database heavy operations by about a factor of 40 percent, 50 percent. As we're averaging on a busy day about 260, 270 milliseconds, um, during peak, they dropped to about 150, 160 or so. Why that's important is RP is a, is a synchronous protocol. So especially for uh, registrars in North America, um, that kind of a drop in the latency of the command where the network latency is preloaded to begin with will substantially increase the amount of throughput you can get per connection. Because we're running, you know, in the order of a thousand or more connections um, uh, per day and, and that's increasing. Um, the other side is uh, scaling DNS. Um, I, some of you at least have heard of, um, of the fact that we're putting out the next generation 64-bit architecture. Um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, what happened with AROOT shortly. Um, but anyway, we, um, we evaluated the various platforms and went with uh, an IBM M80. Uh, the the um, Sunbox just uh, didn't have the horsepower, at least at this time, given that binds uh, single-threaded. And um, the, the uh, HP product was real solid. Um, uh, it compared to very, it actually won the performance benchmark, but compared to the, uh, the last generation IBM. Uh, the bottom line is we're deploying M80s for um, more than half the GTLD servers. We're also uh, in the doing a deal with Sun to uh, put 24 gigabytes in the 4500 and, and four processors and run two versions of Bind per 4500 to get some sort of reasonable performance. Um, in the meantime, though, while we were doing all this, um, this shows you the resolutions per day on the A root and sort of how things were falling off. Uh, as we were watching the A root over um, between um, November and uh, January, February, uh, early February, we noticed that uh, you know the classic growth curve about doubling every six months uh, had just leveled off. 
and we were thinking, you know, well, this could be great, you know, because <laughs> at the rate we were growing, I mean, we were trying to figure out, you know, how much hardware we were going to need. Although it seemed a little suspicious that, you know, this, this curve that's been going on since forever suddenly just sort of stopped. Um, the percent drops started increasing, and then all of a sudden uh, the A route just started to thrash. I mean, we, um, if you actually saw, I don't think I have them here yet, if you actually saw the, um, the packet, the packet drops literally over a period of, of two, three, four days, uh, the packet drops went from, you know, 10, 15 percent to 50 percent or more. Um, got about uh, 12, 13 people working on this round the clock, and um, the end result was there was no DDoS, nothing. It was just pure load had just overcome the box. And um, there were a couple little issues. Uh, we were getting more dynamic updates um, as a result of a certain deployment we didn't talk about. Uh, it was a relatively small percentage, but um, we had actually had logging turned on, and the loggings were pushed over the edge. Um, so basically what we did is we took the, the box we'd been qualifying for the next generation uh, deployment and put that into production and then upgraded that to uh, IBM's uh, biggest box, which is an S80, which is the current A route. Um, we also tweaked, um, we were surprised how many uh, TCP connections um, were just lingering. We were having hundreds and hundreds of uh, TCP connections on the A route. Um, we wrote an assassination server, which basically, when a connection lingers for a while, sends a reset. But we decided to, to, to turn down keep alive, uh, to turn down um, the keep alive defaults, and um, sure enough, uh, it turns out that we're into the ten. So a lot of them were connections, TCP connections established that whatever root went away or whatever the client was no longer visible, but uh, the connection stayed. Uh, we also filter out dynamic updates so they don't even get to the root. So this is basically what happened when we deployed. You can see um, uh, literally the day of deployment, um, the total number of resolutions for the day doubled over what it was before. Um, another way of looking at it is looking at the drops. Uh, if you look at this, generally the, uh, the load on the A route goes up around 9 o'clock, eight, between 8 and 10, and it stays pretty level there until about 6 or so. Uh, you can see where we deployed it, it was exactly 11. Um, one last bit is um, in terms of uh, making more of the operation of the registry, both the OTP side and DNS, um, accessible to folks. Uh, we're piloting um, uh, some near real-time stats. In other words, uh, towards the end of the year or uh, very early Q1, we're going to have um, uh, a site, DNS Central, where you'll be able to go to and, and click on the various uh, GTLD root servers that, that at least we run. and. Um, take a look at some average stats, take a look at uh, a real-time feed, go back and look at some historicals. What you see here, which may be very hard to read, is um, on the left-hand side, by the way, this thing updates about once every five seconds, so it'll show you the actual type of request, both per second and percentage coming in uh, by request type. It'll show you the packet counts, UDP packets going in and out. It'll show you the TLDs that are getting hit per second, as well as uh, the most popular, the 20, 10, 20, 30, it's configurable, uh, most popular names that are being queried and where they're from and how many are duplicates. As we've been watching this a lot more closely, we're finding that there are a fair number of misconfigured servers out there. Uh, there was one particular fellow who was running a server that had gotten caught in an infinite loop and was querying the same domain name uh, at about 100 per second on the A route. No idea why. We called him up. He was very apologetic and stopped. But um, um, actually, it was amazing. We got updates from him on a couple hour basis for a week as to what he was doing. He got a little nervous about the whole situation. Um, but uh, as, we're, as we're following up on this, a lot of, I'd estimate someone who's in 10 or 15% of the load on the A route is just spurious stuff, misconfigurations, uh, queries coming from the exact same client for the exact same name, uh, same IP address, uh, you know, hundreds of times a second. So we we're following up on those. But anyway, in terms of openness, um, look for DNS Central over the next um, probably about three or four months, uh, and you'll start seeing some uh, uh, near real-time staffs on what's going on in the GTLD constellation. Um, any questions? Yes, Paul? Only, only one minor comment, uh, which is that uh, those of us who run digital Unix on our comm servers don't have any memory leak problems. Really? So my NAMD runs six months at a time between upgrades, and it has a, you know, the only reason it grows is because comm gets bigger. Okay. Um, we're seeing some memory leak. It may, uh, we'll talk to um, David. We've, we've been, we're starting to work pretty close with, with Nominum on that. Thank you. Uh, the, by the way, the 
comment about memory leaks is for the version of Bind we're running on Sun, uh, which would be 8.1.2 with, with all the patches that we, we put in place and some tweaks as well. So uh, that's not a comment about the current version 8.2 or 8.2.8. .8. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.